All right, I am super excited about this episode. We have one of the best sales trainers in the game and someone who has an amazing resource on YouTube that I'm ready to learn from. So you might want to grab a pen and a piece of paper because we got the man, the myth, the legend, Ryan Reynolds in the house. Ryan, welcome to the show, my brother. Hey, brother, it's, uh, it's an honor to be on, man. You know, we're all just trying to share knowledge and, and grow together. And that's what this is all about. So the more we can learn together, um, the more money we're all going to make and the more successful we're going to be. For sure. Well, yeah, man, let, let's dive right in. I don't want to waste any time. Um, let's 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 kind of start from the beginning. Um, where did your entrepreneurship journey um, begin? How did you even get introduced to 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 sales in the first place? Um, you know, I actually went to school for video production <laughs> and, uh, I didn't have a sales bone in my body and I was trying to launch this, uh, hotel network and I was hiring these sales guys and they just sucked. And I was, I was so scared to pick up the phone and set meetings or even do a presentation. And there's an expression that says, do the thing you fear. And then the death of fear is certain. Mm. So I was like, you know what? I had a buddy that was and i wasn't making very good money at the time either i mean you know because it was all job by job and video production um i wasn't living in like in la or something doing right. Like crazy movies, right so i was like my buddy was doing insurance and i was like well you know he's he's making wasn't like crazy money like like i'm making now but he was making sixty thousand a year and he's like hey why don't you try this out for a little bit so originally i was like oh i'll just do this for six months just to get over my fear of it right but I remember when I made my first sale um, and I got paid like, I think it was like 1500 bucks or something. And like, yeah. it was like one hour sitting helping a family. And I was like, whoa, like that's what I got paid yeah. like for editing a video, working my butt off like right. all week. So I was like, there's might be something to this, but mm -hmm. it really was just to get over my fear of it. Right. And I think it's a skill set that, you know, everyone, should learn regardless if you're you know selling insurance or selling cars or selling something or not you know we we sell we sell ourselves all day long we sell ourselves to our spouses our girlfriends we sell ourselves to our kids um you have to learn that skill set of, of sales right i'll tell you what you know my lady score went up quite a bit once i got good at insurance yeah at for sure yeah so, it's, um, yes it's funny that you mentioned that because whenever uh i'm training my, my sales team I, I, I try to tell uh, sales professionals, it's kind of like dating, right? And so um, if you can treat it like a game where you, you're trying to connect, you don't want to over talk, right? You want to ask good questions and you really want to listen. And so that's really kind of that that beginning chemistry of, uh, of, of the sales process. So it's funny that you mentioned that. Yep, yep, exactly. Um, and then, so yeah, I just got into it. Started making some pretty good money. Um, when I first started, you know, the resources that are available to anyone watching this video, you know, on my channel or on you know your channel or any of the channels out there, like it's ridiculous what you guys have at your fingertips. Like mm. when I started, you know, I was at low commission, 50 percent. Now people start way higher than that. Right. Um, I, I was a top producer in the country just to get to like 70 percent. And mm. now like starting comp is like way higher than that in the industry. So that's ridiculous. I didn't have a script. I didn't make my own script. I didn't have a presentation to watch. I didn't have a live mentor to coach me to role play. I just had to go out there and wing it, you know? Yeah. And and I think the guys that really make it, you know, this gives you the leg up. But at the end of the day, you know, you are your best teacher by just going and doing, right? Mm -hmm. Like action is your best teacher. And falling on your face, making mistakes, first attempts at learning, fails, a go-okay thing. Um, and that's how I learned, right? It was just like trial and error. Like I was like shaking on the phone the first time. <laughs> yeah. I was out smoking a cigarette, like after every call. Yeah, like, just, scared to death. Like, is this right. for me, right? And just trial and error, man. It's like, all right, this client said this at this point. What could I have said before they said that to kind of counter that? And you just had to learn through trial and error. Um, you know, first week did zero, next week protected three people, next week after that protected six you know, and the sky was limited after that. And that's right. just through child. So I think a lot of people starting this business, the biggest obstacle you got to overcome is not the training, not the business. It's you. Yes. And the it's mindset. Inability. Yeah. 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 It's your inability to take the action to just go out there and, and stop complaining and go do it. Right. Yeah. And be okay falling on your face. For sure. So, so let's go back to, to, to what the first couple months were like for you. 
because you said the you know it took a little bit but then you know it kind of took off so walk me through what those first couple months were like for you um you know for me i think almost like ignorance um you know almost kind of helped me a little bit but you know it, it what i'm kind of just a guy like i get inceptioned so like once i'm like i'm gonna do something like i you know there's no plan b right and i think that you have to be that kind of person if you're gonna make it an insurance um you have to say yo this is my path i was sick and tired you know i i had those nights i think we all have right where i was like so broke where i was just like eating top ramen for like three days because i was just waiting to get some next money coming in or where i had to borrow like 20 bucks to go out with some friends and felt yes. like that right? <laughs> so, you know i was just like sick and tired of it i was like once i got that first sale and I was, I was like whoa like you can make this much money by just moving your lips and helping protect people like get out of here dude game changer so I was just all in, dude. And then and there was no other options. But, you know, how I was taught was just my presentation was just here's some medical questions, go ask them. Right. And then I had to take out, Yeah, I had to pull out apps and like literally read the app until I got like a no. And then the app would say decline. And then I'd pull out another app, <laughs> read all the questions until I got a no. Well, it looks like we can get this one. And then I like price it out. I don't know what I was doing. But then um the one thing I stuck to was um, if they said they didn't want it, then I would just pack up my bag. They're like, yeah, we want to think about it. I'm like, I just start packing up my bag and they're like, hey, can I get your business card? And I'm like, mm. I look at them confused. Like, what do you mean? They're like, well, we're just going to think about it. I'm like, oh, I have other clients to see. Like you if you either get it or you don't. And they'd be like, whoa, 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 Ryan, just sit, just sit back down. <laughs> so that's kind of, that was my closing method was just anything they said. And if they said, yeah, we want this, then I'd start filling it out. But if they're like, yeah, I need to think about it. Anything else, I would just start packing up my stuff. And then whenever they're like, where are you going? And like, when you get your card, I'm like, I got other clients to see. I just right. did my message underwrite. Why would I come back and do this again? I, what do you mean? I yeah. already did it. You want to do this twice? I'm confused here. So it was almost like my ignorance, you know, was like helping out. For sure. And so you go through, you know, a couple months of kind of struggling. You write that first 1500. You're like, oh, OK, I can just do this from from, you know, from from using, you know, moving your lips in the words that you said. So when did it actually click when you realize, oh, I, I figured it out? When was that moment where you're like, oh, OK, now I think I've got something and I'm about to make a bunch of money? You know, it's it was the first time I made one sale. <laughs> once you can do it once, you just know you got to replicate it again. Now you know it's possible. You're like, all right, you know, I just made money. So now I just got to repeat the same actions over and over again and just do more of it, right? So, you know, I was dialing, you know, age leads and yeah, I get hung up on left and right. Um, I do think that it's a little bit harder now. Um, during the, the Trump era, they rolled back the regulations on the cell phones mm -hmm. and so that's why we get so many telemarketing calls now. Uh, but you know, back in the day, because I've been doing this for 13 years, you know, a lot of people are answering more often their cell phones, right? So I hadn't really transitioned yet. And then they de they deregulated that. Now people are getting 20 telemarketing calls a day. Mm. So you really got to ring these guys even harder. So it's like yeah. three, rings, three rings every hour. It's like, okay, you got your batch of 25 three rings that hour, three rings the next hour, three rings the next hour. So we're getting hit nine times by the same phone number just to get them to answer, which we're not even telemarketers. Dude. Right. We're just like, we're like, yo, dude, you put a request in for help. I'm just trying to get that request to you. Like, what? you know, they, if anyone answers and gets mad at me, be like, trust me, I didn't want to call you that many times, but you didn't answer. Right, you, you didn't answer. I got to get you this information, man. I'm sorry. Like, you're the one that asked me to call you, man. Why are you getting mad at me? <laughs> for so. sure, for sure. So. Um, I've, I've did a little bit of research on you. Number one, I haven't found anyone that has the level of depth of uh, content and information on sales, particularly. Um, there's a lot of general information, but the, the depth, not the breadth, but the depth of the information that you have on your um, YouTube channel is quite a resource. And uh, I'm just curious where that love for sales came from, because it seems like you got this passion. And, and I, the reason why I'm asking this is because sometimes uh, sales can get a dirty rap, right? Like, I don't want to be salesy, but, you know, the, the, the wealthiest people in the world are sales people, right? And so where does this passion and this love for sales come from for you? 
You know what? It's it's I, I, I no one wants to be a salesperson, right? It sounds dirty. I was like, I don't want to do sales. Like, screw that. Like, I want to be like an artist, creative. You know, I'd rather be having a YouTube channel, right? And just go and make them like blogs all day. That sounds yes, way better. For sure. That's how we think of it, right? But then once I got into it, there's a lot of art in communication and psychology. And then it got super interesting. Like, this is interesting. So if I say this, mm. this is how they react. So the psychology of the sale to me, I've always been a deep thinker, um, is really interesting. And um, when it comes to sales now in, in 2020, you know, it's actually the anti salesman is the one that makes the money. So yes. it can't be about you. It can't be about the product. It's just got to be about trying to serve and help that person. And really, it's not I wouldn't call it sales anymore. I think a better word for it's like curiosity. Like, are you curious for the problem? And how can you solve it? Right? Right. So, you know, sales nowadays, is just curiosity and just and just asking lots of questions. The old school sales, like the dirty car salesman and the old dirty sales agents for life insurance back in the day, they were statement givers. Mm -hmm. um, the new the new way to do sales is curiosity. That's just a question asking. So the more questions you're asking, you're just finding out more information and more questions after that, more questions after that. And with life insurance, I mean, there's just two basic questions you got to remember to ask. It's pretty simple. Hey, so, OK, I know this is going to be a tough question to ask you, but we're talking about something important here. You you died yesterday. OK, so, you know, car crash, had a heart attack. You know, you was yesterday. You're here now as a ghost looking at your family. What's the situation look like for them today if you weren't here? Mm. OK, paint the picture. Right. And then dig into some more questions on that. And then the, the next question is, what do you want to happen for them? Gotcha. Yeah, that it's as simple as that, you know, and if anything they say after that, like you're like, OK, you know, based on, you know, budget, you know, because we can customize this thing, you know, besides that. Is there anything, any reason why you wouldn't want to protect your family with, with a plan, you know, and get some to ensure that they're going to be okay. Insurance is to insure. Mm -hmm. They say so that it's sold right there. You don't have to give any premiums. You don't have to give any coverage, any details. It's sold on the questions right up front. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's gold. And so I'm, I'm glad you segued into that because I, I wanted to kind of talk about your philosophy um, in selling life insurance, right? Because there's just a certain, there's like a few phases that you have to go through at a high level um that you want to kind of check like some checkpoints in in the sale of life insurance uh so i'm just curious on what those points are for you like if you're talking to a brand new agent and you're like hey you want to make sure that you do or you check these five boxes and if you do this typically the result is going to end up with you walking out of there with a check yeah it's going to be three things right there's th there's three objections actually four objections uh that will cause you not to get a sale so it's as long as you can overcome these in your first five minutes or 10 minutes or whatever you're opening, then you have a sale every single time. So the first one's trust, right? And how do you get a client to trust you? You come off confident. Okay. If you don't act like you know what you're doing, then you're not going to confident. So how mm. do you gain your confidence? Lots and lots of action, lots of practice. You're supposed to fail at first. You're going to have 20% of people they are going to buy no matter if you're the worst salesperson on the planet. You're going to have 60% that's based on skill that you're going to learn by doing, right? And watching videos and studying. And then you're going to have 20% that just don't buy no matter what, right? Just because they're either a selfish, they're stupid, or they think they predict the future, or they're conspiracy theorists and think that everyone's out to get them and they don't trust anybody on the planet, right? Mm -hmm. so, you know, you just can't close those people no matter how much skill you got. Right. But, you know, if you're at 80% closer, close ratio, like that's me, then, hey, you know, then you, you got it. You know, you're good. So trust is going to be, you know, big one, but that's just based on practicing your presentation, not showing up as an amateur. Mm -hmm. You know, you have all these scripts online. It, it literally drives me insane to see people come into this business and spend an hour practicing your script. Like you really think people are going to trust you spending an hour, like spend 60, like know that thing, like the back of your hand, right. be a professional dude. Like the amount of money you can make here is ridiculous. Right. So ain't something to complain about like get out if, if, if you're complaining right now you should not be a business owner you need to get out of the way and you need to go get a job at taco bell like you are not ready dude or go drive some uber like yeah 100 percent. 60 80 hours up front studying getting your presentation down being comfortable and confident with it's number one and that's gonna get rid of trust you okay so that's easy trust is easy just show up as professional next one's gonna be shopping right you got to let them know that you're you're the broker. 
that you're shopping multiple carriers for the lowest cost because they don't know. They think it's like you're in construction. They're like, oh, I'm going to get a bid here, a bid over there, a bid over there. <laughs> like, dude, this is insurance, man. Prices right. are fixed. Law. Like, there's not like Joe Schmo from from uh, you know State Farm has a better hookup than than John from State Farm. It's the same price as State Farm, right? So you got to explain that to your client that you're shopping multiple carriers for the lowest cost and it's based on age and health, right? Mm. So shopping is going to be the, one of the other objections you got to get over, however right. you want to do that. Um, the next one's going to be need, right? We were talked about that earlier. You got to find the need. And that's just being curious and asking good questions and trying to paint the scene of, you know, hey, if, if something happened tomorrow, you know, what are you going to do, right? You know, what's what's your plan right now? Are you So your, your plan is for your kids to do a car wash. Can mm. you help me understand why that's okay? Because... <laughs> I would be so sad if that was my mom's plan. I'm glad she's helped me out. Can you help me understand why you think that's okay for your kids to take care of your responsibilities for them to do car washes and go fund me? Hmm. Cause that's, I hear that. Can you help me understand that? Like call people out, right? Yeah, for so, sure. You know, it's if, if you believe in your product and you don't care about your commission, you're comfortable saying that kind of stuff because insurance is a, is, you know, no brainer. Like everyone needs to have this stuff. You know, I, I guess if you're like a single person, you know, with no one that relies on you, you shouldn't have it maybe, but the advantage is you get it now, it's cheaper. So I'd still say, get it now. Why not give it to your mom? She gave you birth, dude. Like, you know, you die, give her an extra hundred grand, still no brainer, right? So you gotta believe in it first. So need, ask questions. And then that leaves the, the fourth one, which is getting rid of the think about it, mm. right? Um, cause people are naturally procrastinators and they go, I need to maul over if I love my family. Like, yeah, what? for sure. <laughs> I gotta think about if I love my family, huh? I mean, those Big Macs, you know, uh, at McDonald's or my family. I kind of like Big Macs better actually. Come on, it's a no brainer, right? So right. we get rid of the procrastination and the way you do that is just very direct. You're just like, look, I do not do second appointments since we're going to shop every carrier for you. Right. So want to get a plan we'll apply for it see if we can get you approved if you don't let me know we'll close the case period yep. that's what it is. for sure you, know, you just be up front like hey we're here to see qualify you we either put it in see if you get approved if you don't want one i close the case out there's no reason to do underwrites twice because we don't even know if you can get it yet yeah 100 percent. and so i want to kind of talk about this because this is the next point which is objections and and kind of what we teach is um is that objections are really just like false beliefs and it's the, the delay of the inevitable and it's fear-based because most people don't want to make the wrong decision but what i tell um most agents and, and salespeople is that most people don't know how to make a, a the right decision or a good decision and you have to walk them through what a good decision looks like either structurally painting the picture for what would happen if they made a good decision or telling the story of somebody that was just like them that made a good decision. So what's, what's your viewpoint on objections? Um, objections go away with time. So like I said, that 20% are layups in the beginning and mm -hmm. through your confidence goes up. You're going to get less objections. Right? I, I hardly ever get them now. Mm. Um, then I would say with your objections, get good at repeating yourself like a parrot. Because, you know, mm. if you look at the the Rush Freestyle script that I made, it's out on the internet for everybody, free gift, 13 years of experience, that Rush Freestyle script gets rid of every possible objection in the first 10 minutes. And all you have to do when you when when they throw out any objections, go back and read the paragraph again. Just go, hey, we went over this before, but boom, just read that paragraph again. So just repeat stuff a lot. Um, is how you get rid of objections. Just repeat the same thing. The cool thing is it makes them feel stupid. You're like, oh yeah, he already he already told, talked about that. So like, you know, in my opening, I might say, you know, hey, we're gonna need three things, your bank account, your driver's license, your social for that approval process. Any questions? Mm. Okay, and then like, like well, I have to, why do I have to get my banking information? I'm like, <laughs> we went over people, that. you're gonna need three things, your driver's license, your social, and your bank account. I asked you if you had any questions about it. You said no. What's going on now? What's up? And it makes them feel kind of stupid because you already went over this, right? But objections are just something that that clients don't actually want to know the answer to ever. It's just a test to see if they can trust you, right? Right. It's a confidence test. That's all it is. So by you repeating the same thing that you already went over and throw it in their face, that's what a confident person would do. 
right? right. Like, why, why are you bugging me? Why are you wasting my time? I already went over this. Let me just repeat it again, you dummy. And that's confidence, right? So that that throws it back in their face that, hey, I passed your test. Let's move on, you know, okay? Yeah, 100%. And, and you mentioned having a, an amazing resource. What's the website? Because I, I took a look at it, but I don't know it off the top of my head. What's the website that has this, all yeah, these yeah. resources? Yeah. FFLrush.com, you know, everything that I do, I put out there for everybody um, to be more successful, regardless if you work with me or not. You know, the more agents that we have out there protecting families, the better, because um, people need this coverage, right? So mm -hmm. you know, th this is a sharing community. And, you know, I think it's important that as you learn these skill sets to go help uh, agents go make more money, regardless. It's not about us, dude, making money off you guys. It's about us teaching you how to make money for you and that makes me feel really good that you your family goes up in life right and then helping more families out uh getting this coverage in place yeah 100 percent. and and i took a look at this website and and by far this is the most in-depth website for um new agents experienced agents handling objections sales mindset how to approach the business, even if you just want to be an upline and you want to know the resources that you need to give to your downlines, I would go and take a look at, at this website. And, and it's, it's something amazing to see. And so I'm just curious on what sparked you to create this resource, because it, it, it definitely took some time and somebody that had the experience that you had. So why did you why did you build that website? Um, something that I wish I had when I first started. You know, so it's it's really based around me. It's like, what would I want if I was a new agent? You know, so I was like, let me design a good quote tool that has, you know, everything I need right there. The e apps, you know, this and that easy access. So it's a, it's a thin quote tool I use. <laughs> I'm like, what kind of quote tool I want to use? So I created it for me, and then that's what I use, and then so everyone else can use it too. Um, but yeah, just just kind of for my agents originally was to do that, and then just to make it public and. Um, it's cool to hear the thank yous and stuff and comments of like, hey, man, I love your website. I use it all the time. People are not on my team. And and uh, that's that's cool, too. You know, it, it, I think in life, too, I mean, I had a 2022 year where, you know, I got screwed over by so many awful people, mm. you know, good mind, uh, agents, um, this and that, just terrible, terrible people. But, you know, karma is a funny thing. You know, I think, uh, you know, it, it, if you keep giving back, it's going to keep pouring forward eventually, right? You know, I'm not seeing a huge success yet, but I know that, you know, by pouring back energy into other people, eventually I'll receive um, some good good things back to me as well. So for sure. That's yeah. And, and and that's the only thing that you can hope for, right? And, and again, like I like when we talked um off camera, there was, you know, uh, evil is no match for good, right? And darkness is no match for light. And so what you have to do is you have to continue to press forward. Those are learning experiences for us. And again, again, if you continue with the mindset to serve and to help people, right? Like Zig Ziglar said, if you help every, uh, a lot of people get what they want, you can have everything you want. So in saying that, um, I feel like this topic is missed a bunch because everybody's just talking about the script or, or um, the, the, the next objection to handle. But I want to talk about mindset on the day to day. So you, you, you get beat up in the field one day or you, your, your, your day blows up for you. How do you as a top performer stay at a peak state? Um, and how do you approach the day to day process? Because a lot of times that's where the agents fail. It's not that they can't make the sales or they don't have the right tools is because they get in their own head, which then they get in their own way. And then ultimately they talk themselves out of, um, you know, the opportunity. Yeah. Um, you know, I wish I could solve that problem. You know, it's, uh, you know, they have this little thing, you know, Cody Atkins says 8% nation. And it's sad because he's basically trying to say that 92% of people fail at your life insurance, right? Mm -hmm. But you know, I don't think it's life insurance, it's entrepreneurship, right? right. So, <clears throat> so he's got to fix that. You know, it's hard to be your own boss, right? There's no one, no one waking you up in the morning, no one t telling you what to do. You got to tell yourself. And that's the hardest part. Now, luckily, I grew up with two parents that were entrepreneurs. So I always had that you know, ability. And anytime I worked for, you know, someone that was a boss that told me what to do, I hated it. I was like, screw that. Like, you know, I don't want to be told what to do. So I have a passion for being able to be responsible for my wins and my losses. But I would, I would say this, you, you got to keep it simple. Um, first rule of fight club is right. You know, that one don't talk yeah. about fight club. Yes. First, <laughs> first rule of insurance is dial the phones. Second rule of insurance is dial the phones. Third rule is dial the phones. 
um, you know, where a lot of agents screw up is they pretend like they're working and managers too. I made a huge mistake, you know, this past year where, you know, I'd get away from that, those first three rules of dialing. And, uh, I would be like helping out agents. Right. And I'm like, okay, well, at least I'm helping out agents. No, I got to take care of me first. Right. I got to be making sure I'm, I'm getting up to my, you know, income goals for the year. And then I got time for agents where a lot of new agents make mistakes. It's like, oh, I got to figure out this turbo text thing, or I got to <laughs> work on this thing. It's like, dude, it's dial time. Like, right. Dial your priority. You can do that stuff at nine o'clock at night. So the, the first step is just starting with a realistic goal. I think, I think if you set goals for yourself that are unrealistic, mm -hmm. then it, mentally it really messes you up because you didn't accomplish that goal. So start with something nice and easy, right? So, you know, pick, pick like a three hour window, like, you know, that's super simple. Maybe like you like to sleep in, you're like, all right, it's so hard for me to get up at eight o'clock, you know, then start at 11 because at least you starting at 11 is going to make you feel good about yourself, right? right? And this job's a mental game. You got to set goals to make yourself feel good about yourself. So it's like, maybe it's noon. Maybe it's freaking five o'clock in the afternoon. Do whatever the hell you want from morning till five. You can't make excuses. At five right. o'clock, you got to be awake. You got to do something, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, hey, every day at five o'clock to eight o'clock, I'm dying the phones, no matter what. You know, I'm telling, I'm telling, you know, my family, I'm telling my friends, I'm telling everybody, this is just, a, I have to stick to these three hours, right? So you got to pick, Sometimes it, no matter what, that's all you do. No excuses, no Facebook, mm. no other else, no other little stupid stuff. And right. you, can, you can get caught up to being an entrepreneur like, oh, I need to work on, you know, this, this or the next thing. No, dialing's number one, dialing's number two, dialing's number three, right? And that's it. So you got to stick with that because ringing the phone's where the money's at. And then it's just a numbers game. Um, if you're getting no's, that's good. That means you're working, okay? For you're sure. just trying to find that 20%. Um, that's going to be a yes. And then you're going to work on your 60% skill set through repetition, study more videos, do more one-on-one -on -one coaching with your mentors like myself or like you, um, and then kind of upgrading from there. But that's it, man. I think just, I think too many people get away from their dial schedule. Yeah. And you know, you gotta have, you gotta have something set in that dial schedule. So if it's face to face, you have to have an appointment goal. Right. Like, hey, I can't quit dialing today until I have one appointment. Right. Then now you get that goal done. It's two appointments. After that, it's three appointments, four, five, six, seven, ten. Hey, this today, I got to get 15 appointments set. Right. But, you know, I think that would really help people out to start off with small goals. Like I got to get at least one appointment set today. Now you right. got a pat on the back and you feel proud of yourself. Right. But you got to keep raising that goal. OK, now it's two. Right. Now it's three. Now it's four. Now it's five. Now it's 15. But I think if your if your goal is fifteen and you only did six, you kind of feel like a loser, and that mental state can really drag you down to make you want to quit. So start with small goals and, and work your way up. Yeah, one hundred percent. Well, man, I, I definitely got a, a ton of nuggets for this. And for any of you life insurance agents out there that may be struggling with sales or, or thinking about giving up, I I ensure you and implore you to 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 reach out to to ryan his content his free stuff alone is more valuable than anything that i've seen and so ryan where can people reach out to you life insurance agents if they're looking about getting into the business or they're looking for some some more help um how can they reach out to you yeah you just go to fflrush.com ffl family first life rush .com, mm -hmm. and then um you'll see a link there to set up an interview um so we can do some help um the one-on-one -on -one coaching, though, I mean, I got to save that for people direct to me because I only got so much time in the day. For so, sure. But, but you know, um, if it honestly, if it, to be very honest, like all I would need <laughs> is my YouTube channel and my website, and I'd be off and rolling, dude. So for sure, for sure, for yeah. sure, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah, man, it's definitely been um, great connecting with you, and I'm looking forward to to your success. Thank you for hopping on. I, I really appreciate it. So, guys, thank y'all so much for hopping on the Rainmaker podcast. And, again, go to FFLRush.com if you're looking for some of the, the best, the most advanced sales training. Um, and if, you, if you're not in the right place, reach out to Ryan. Again, if you're serious and hardworking, reach out to him. Don't waste his time. And we'll see you on the next Rainmaker podcast. We'll see you soon. All right.